Magnolia, one of the first few ride lines introduced as a start deck during the early days of Overdress. We've seen the deck evolve through the first few sets and reach one of its pretty peaking points, Magnolia Elder, which had dominated the set for meta, eventually receiving a choice restriction of Inlet Pulse, as it was able to consistently recycle in from the soul as both 18k bodies, a soul generator, and a draw engine, alongside with cards such as Gnozla providing Stoikia numbers for Elder's low numbers that could easily be shut down with a defensive, and MPix for retired matchups such as Gavidia at that time. Due to Magnolia being a deck of <laughs> one of the characters of all time, Megami from the Overdress anime, it didn't lack in support throughout the later sets. Although, it was a considerably quiet period in terms of dedicated support. Cards such as Serral, Alpin, Goldout, and, uh, Winzapu that were introduced. However, with the introduction of new and upgraded decks that were arguably more fast, powerful, and oppressive than Elder, it started to see a drop off in both usage and performance, even after the ban was revoked. Hell, even in set 7, Megami Seiyu actually at one point chose to play a Euphoric instead. Although, when set 12 was released, Magnolia finally received a huge focus in support and a shift in its playstyle, Magnolia Moss. It possesses two, yet impactful skills. The first is a continuous witch for any rearguards on Dragon Tree markers, gives plus 10k power and enables back row swings. And second, an act where removing a different name Magnolia from either your hand, soul, or drop to gain thread tax. That being, any time a unit from the back row swings, you choose one of your opponent's rearguards and retire it, making for at least a maximum of three selected pops. Out of all the Moss units introduced, Magnolia is one of the most interesting units in terms of card design, mainly how the new game plan is centered around generating Dragon Tree markers, similar to Grifagila. Notably, this time it's in the back row to carry out its gimmick, as opposed to the other Moss decks to date that would rather benefit from placing the markers in the front row and realistically only make one or two per game. Being of Stoikea means that Magnolia has a reasonable pull of ride line options. One is the original ride line, where Cheris can call the top card of your deck to rearguard circle, either leading towards calling some essential cards or unfortunate moments that force you to call or soul in. Lattice makes a similar case, except at the very least, if you do a whiff for revealing an order, you can add to your hand instead. Another option, and arguably the most optimal one, is Ranker Chain and Black Tears House Dragon. It synergizes well with both the Moss Order and Stoikia's range of generic normal orders. Ranker grants your early draws to cycle for pieces, while Dragon gives you essentially a free ride for refunding an order. However, do keep in mind if you choose to run this ride line, bump up your order count, just so you don't whiff Ranker. Rorua and Flagbird's ride lines are also useful, I guess. On the other hand, similar to Barrow Magnus playing Pony in his ride line, or Thegru with Maple in her ride line, rearguard utilities such as Lepcor and Goldo can potentially be played to build onto a later turn drop setup with any form of Soul Blast. Moreover, unlike if you were to run other ride lines since both are Sylvan Horned Beasts, Cyril can then actually be committed early for its skill. Funnily enough, Cyril due to its future proofing was actually buffed through Moss going second Persona ride and also provided in our method of digging for Magnolia Moss to improve on the deck consistency. Continuing on with key units, Defu Elf and Bissi Yotfuss are your main marker generators. Note that, to get the maximum amount of swings, you would need at least free open counterblast. Of course, you can gradually build up into free markers as the deck slowly snowballs into free markers. For individual skills, a well searches for your mosque, and Bist, if you have the spare counterblast in the soul, can also fetch back orders. But, Tet, what would I do if my board keeps getting blown up or I can't get enough units on board? Well, on that topic... My friend, may I introduce you to the card that unbelievably fixes this deck. Four Scroll Dragon, a grade 2 which, if you have a Magnolia Mosque as your vanguard, choose grade for your lower cards up to the same number of Dragon Tree markers on your board, and call them. Holy sh! this is Soul Charm! Next is that Four Scroll on swing gives Magnolia 5k, making it 18k to 28k <gasps> with one swing. While it doesn't seem like much, the 5k in theory makes the vanguard swing more threatening through awkward guarding and the drive check pressure. Or, in easier words, if Mag was an 18k, a 15k shield wouldn't be enough for a 2 pass. In short, the unit acts as both a body and how you'll get back to repairing the board with just the counterblast. Additionally, allowing your drop to also be your toolbox for exactly what you'd want to call back, whether it being general bodies to utilize the markers, wretches to make more, or gold out as a huge swing. Moral onto gold though, it provides its utility by both being a power generator, a huge swing for no cost, and acting as an R inlet pulse in the back of the center. Perhaps the anchor of this deck is also the different orders that can be used to rebuild the board. There are quite a few options, but there is one order that is almost universally used, Mythiarch Habitat, as it can search out for either your Dragon Tree Wretches in the early game, a Force Grow Dragon in the late game, or even Gold Dota if you haven't seen one already. Plus, it also does provide some filtering, so that's a bonus too. Other options include Frozen Resentment, Command of Death's Restraint, Spiritual Body Condensation, all of which can recur cards from the drop zone, meaning that Force Grow Dragon, or anything needed for the current game state, can be recycled accordingly. In summary, Magnolia Moss can create an explosive moss turn especially when going second, 
pressure hard with its multi-attack and bigger numbers in Elder, have a method of mass board revival to maintain its constant pressure, and has accesses to Ikea's variety of generic cards that revive and refund. And notably, the magic of the deck is how swing patterns and targets range depending on game state, dangerous board targets, defensive checks, and denying intercept value of the red tax retire. But what exactly goes wrong with the deck? Well, needing to run the wretches to generate markers, with Bis being partially flexible in the ratios, leads to a tighter deck space, making it hard to incorporate tech options or even bigger beat sticks. If you're running Rancor and Dragon, orders are a necessity to open in the starting hand, taking up a considerable amount of deck space. Of course, the 50 card rule coming later in January can help with this, but it sort of does hurt the consistency of the deck. Despite Inlet and Golda providing a draw engine, the hand can sometimes feel fake in guarding because of the moss, copies, and orders, making it a bit rough when going against turn free burst decks. However, it's able to hit back harder with the Persona turn. While Moss can provide a partial answer to the turn 4 decks of set 13 if it goes second, it does struggle with keeping up. This is fair in the versus Jajuled matchup having the back row constantly retired, which forces the player to loop force grow until they get locked out of resources. Burning at least 3 counter blasts to maximize attacks, despite its only outside use being on force grow, means they can easily get locked out of resources going into matchups such as Prison. Surprisingly, Mag can actually hold a candle towards Master Tire, thanks to the best card in the deck. Oh, well, there's also Java, and if they go into the 5 stack Stravarina, well... Yeah, good luck. With all things considered, it's undeniable that Magnolia still has the potential to steal games outright. <clears throat> BCS Melbourne 2023. To get you started, there's a few deck lists we can cover, one being the more common sort of build, which uses Ranker Chain and Black Tears House Dragon. Again, if you do run this ride line, make sure to bump your order count to at least 6 or 7, and include Elementari if you can. Another list we have here is Golden in the ride line, mainly to guarantee that's in the drop. You can use it to soul in and give 5k to Mag, or even revive it with Orders or Force Grow Dragon. And while we continue to wait for the 50 cards to change, a few suggestions for what you could include the upcoming promo for Magnolia Moss that countercharges, intercepts, and back row and gains power is a really solid option. Hang on, why is this card so good? Holy shit. Ladder from Triple Drive is also a good pick for board resist and a target to ditch with Ranker and Dragon Ride Line. You potentially can include more copies of Inlet Pulse for more draw and maybe Alpen if you're conscious about countercharge. Leo Garda. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let me explain. Let me explain. Is a tech for a huge beat stick outside of Gold Load. On a Dragon Tree Marker with at least 3 in the back row is 36k. If you have Serral, 46k. This is not accounting for triggers checked and the drop, meaning it can get bigger. Overall, Magnolia is perhaps one of the most underlooked decks of set 12, as Bastion, Omnagruzio, and Orphis took the main spotlights of that meta, and going into set 13, it continues to fade into obscurity. There is surprisingly room for more potential support, thanks to both the Will Dress D2 manga and Megumi returning for Divines. So, it's exciting to see what heights Bushroad takes Magnolia and the Sylvan Horn Beast Archetype. And god, please, Megumi deserves better writing than Megumi Bushroad. And that's all for Magnolia Moss today. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. If we missed anything or some funny tech that you'd like to share that we didn't cover, please also leave a comment down below. Until next time, see you all in the next video.